Hey everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to be giving you tips and advice on how you can write your science IA, that being either physics, chemistry, or math. And this just might work for bio, but I'm not sure I didn't do bio. So yeah, let's get started. The introduction is important because it's what gives the examiner the first impression of what your IA is going to be like. So if your introduction starts off like it's a big scrambled mess and there's grammar mistakes and spelling mistakes all over the place, that bad impression is going to carry throughout your IA. The introduction is either going to be where you're going to kill it with personal engagement marks or you're going to completely blow it by going completely over the top. The introduction is also important because it's a chance to give the examiner a clear picture about what you're going to do so he doesn't have to stress about and try and figure out what you're trying to do throughout the IA. He already knows, basically, based off the introduction, what you're doing. And I'm making this video because I found like when I was first trying to write these introductions, I didn't really know what to write. I knew I wanted to capture like the attention of the examiner, but I didn't really know how to do it in a way that made sense, in a way that like was straightforward. Like for all of the other parts of the science IAs, you know, like method, it's clear what you want to do. Apparatus, it's clear what you want to do. Uh, evaluation, it's clear what you got to do. You got to evaluate your method. But then for the introduction, it's kind of like, oh my God, like where do you even start? After having done like three science IAs, I kind of found a structure that works for me when it comes to science IAs and it could potentially work really well for you. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing that structure that you could use for your introduction. That being in mind, this is only one way to write an introduction. There's so many different ways that you could about your introduction you can always take this structure and then tweak it to make it work for you so this isn't really how to write the introduction but it's gonna give you a great structure that you could use for your introduction that's gonna make the writing process so much more easier also by the way I'm not an examiner I'm not a teacher I'm just a student who has had to struggle through trying to figure out how to write these IAs so yeah that's just the perspective I'm coming from and when I mention oh the examiner is gonna think this it's really just this anecdotal idea of an examiner that I have in my head that I was using whilst I was writing these IAs so yeah let's get started okay so the point of the introduction from how I see it is to grab the attention of the examiner introduce the them to what you are doing and then introduce them to the research question and kind of give an outline about what you're going to do. So basically how I structure my introductions is based off what I just mentioned before. So basically in the structure of my introduction it consists of three parts. First the idea is you introduce the IA with a personal story, a question, or an interesting fact. Then you transition from that interesting fact into some background information about the theory that your IA stands upon. So as you can see, the fun fact kind of is supposed to lead into the theory. That theory is used to set you up for the third part in which you show how you got inspired by that theory that you were talking about to develop your research question and aim. You start asking a few questions, you ask some hypothetical ones if you can, you ask any sub-research questions that you were thinking about, and then finally you conclude with your research question and from that research question, you state your aim. Your aim being what you exactly want to accomplish in your A. The question is the question you're going to be answering. The aim is essentially how you're going to be answering that question. So when coming to the stage of the aim and method, you really want to try and build on what you had said before and also explain why you wanted to choose your aim and method. So that's essentially the theory. It's quite simple. You start with a fun fact, move into a bit of theory, then you go into your research question in which you explain why you chose that research question and you explain your aim. Okay, so now having explained that, I'm going to demonstrate how I use this structure in my physics IA. Okay, so I first start off with a short paragraph, which is essentially my interesting fact or story. So, for thousands of years, humans have been trying to calculate pi, a circle circumference divided by its diameter, to the highest degree of accuracy possible. Pi is a particularly important constant in physics, appearing all throughout the subject. It is vital for understanding oscillations and waves, and appears in many physics equations. So as you can see, this is a somewhat like anecdotal story about pi. I'm really talking about how amazing pi is. It's just an anecdote, but it serves to really give an oomph start to my internal assessment. So now after having said that interesting fact or story, I move into a bit of the theory behind my IA. One particular way of calculating pi that caught my interest is Gregory Galperin's method, published in 2002, in which he calculates the digits of pi by counting the number of collisions between two blocks and a wall. This method can be described as the following. So as you can see, I move in from that short interesting story about how people have been calculating pi for a long time to move into the theory about how this one physicist found this really interesting way to calculate pi. Then over here in this indented paragraph is a quote by Gregory Galperin in which he explains the theory. None of this is in 
my own words, it's all quoted by Gregory Galperin. Now, I think this is really important. Um, a lot of teachers scare kids into putting absolutely everything into their own words and don't remind the kids that it's perfectly fine to quote sources and bring information from other people. So in this section, none of this is my own words. It's all quoted by someone else. And the reason why I've done that rather than actually writing it out for myself is because I know this theory is complicated and I'm definitely gonna screw it up if I attempt to explain it. So it's okay in your IA and introduction to have some quotes by experts uh, in which they explain the theory in their own words. It actually can make your work look more professional because it looks like you've actually done some research on this thing. You haven't just read some Wikipedia article, interpreted in your head, and then accidentally screwed up the theory in your introduction. So yeah. Obviously not all of your background information in theory should be in quotes, you need to write some of it yourself. But if there's a really important theory that you have to explain in your IA and you know for sure that you aren't going to do it justice, don't feel afraid to quote it in your IA. Okay, so I'm not going to read this part out, you can read it if you want to, but I'm just going to move on to the next part. So in this part is where I show how I was inspired by the theory that I stated to develop this research question on top of that theory. So I'm not just saying, oh, I'm gonna copy this dude. I'm saying, okay, this is the theory, this is the interesting stuff by this guy. Now, that made me think about this, that led me to do this, and this is how I thought of my research question. So in this paragraph, I'm also gonna be showing my interest to really get those personal engagement marks as well. Let's just look at it. I was impressed how Galperin was able to turn a seemingly abstract maths problem into a physics problem. I have always been interested in the more theoretical, more mathematical aspect of physics and immediately became invested in investigating the phenomena. Even though that scenario is described as ideal, I decided to investigate to what extent to which the collisions have to be elastic so that pi can still be computed. Is there any level of elasticity that can be lost so that pi can be computed? So as you can see here, I kind of show where my interest came from in this topic and from there what I wanted to investigate. So it's kind of like my research question was born naturally out of this interest rather than just me just coming up with it randomly. Doing it this way kind of shows like where my research question actually came from. And and that is a good thing to aim for in your IA. So when you're doing your IA, try to add some sort of like story to it essentially that kind of shows like where you were able to develop this research question. Maybe you thought of this, you thought of that, you thought of this, and then suddenly you became interested in answering this research question. Okay, now that we've looked at my physics IA, hopefully you've got somewhat of an idea about how this structure works. Now we're gonna be looking at my chemistry IA. Now I'm not gonna read out my chemistry IA because it's a bit long, but I'm just gonna highlight certain parts, and if you want, you can read into it more for yourself. I'm less proud about my chemistry IA because I was running out of time and I had to be a bit cheesy. So some of the bits I'm like, ugh, like I just put that in there because I had to, but then other parts I think are still worthwhile so yeah let's look at it so I started off with this cute story about how my family is our rice farmers and how they deal with rust constantly I talk about how rust is a major issue in many industries and I quote sources which show how much money is lost to rust so that was like a little like story introduction that's going to lead to my chemistry IA which is about a chemical reaction that is used to target rust. So I say, one solution to combat rust is to coat iron and steel with a material layer of metal which is rust resistant. This process is known as electroplating. Electroplating is what I'm going to be doing in my IA. So this is a nice transition into what I'm going to be talking about in my IA. Then I define electroplating. So now we're getting a bit more into the theory and I say, electroplating is defined as the electro deposition of an adherent metallic coating upon an electrode for the purpose of securing a surface with properties of dimensions different from those on the basis metal. So as you can see, this is a good example for an introduction because what I'm doing is I'm starting off with a somewhat interesting story, then moving on to the theory. But what I wanted to most highlight in my chemistry IA introduction is that I've got a diagram on the side, as you can see here. This interesting diagram helps me talk about the science and better explain the theory behind my IA. The process is somewhat complicated to describe. Like how I said with my uh, physics IA, I didn't think I could do explaining the concept justice. The reason why I couldn't give a diagram for my physics IA was because there were a bunch of moving parts in it and so a diagram wouldn't have really helped. But in this case, I did use a diagram because it's helping me to visualize the theory for the examiner so he doesn't have to think too hard about what's going on. He can simply look at the diagram and know what's going on. He can visualize the theory rather than try and work out what I'm trying to talk about. So following that, I begin to describe zinc. 
how zinc is a really good metal for electroplating. As you can see, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build justification and reason for why I'm doing the IA that I'm doing. Because I decided to do zinc electrodes, I had to explain why I was doing zinc electrodes, not just that I was doing zinc electrodes. So what I've got here is an E values table, which I won't get into the science of it now. Over here, I basically explain why zinc works as a metal that can be electroplated. Something to do with the enol values, which if you study redox chemistry, which you need to do for your exams, uh, or not may students, then you may be able to understand what I'm getting at with the enol values. If not, I'm not going to explain right now. When I first handed in my introduction, one of the most prominent comments on my IA was, why did you pick zinc? Like, it seems like you just picked a metal out of the blue. And I did. That's exactly what I did. He caught me out on there. To try and hide the fact that I just picked zinc randomly, I decided to add in a bunch of justification about zinc to explain why I did zinc. This is really important for personal engagement. If you decide to do something about, like, viscosity, and then you're using honey, but then you don't explain why you're using honey, then that's basically going to confuse the examiner because he's not going to understand, like, why did you pick honey? Why you're using the materials that you are using. Then in these next two paragraphs, I kind of explain how I came to the research question that I came to. So I talk about in a preliminary study, I attempted to do some sort of electroplating, but it didn't work. So thus, I decided to simplify the experiment by just cutting the zinc electrodes into sheets of paper rather than using nails and coins like I was before. Then I talk a bit about how Faraday's laws of electrolysis played into this and how I wanted to extend my work by not only doing the electrolysis, but also by using uh, the law set by Faraday's theory to compare to my experimental results. So as you can see in my final sentence, Thus, in this IA, I will compare my experimental results to the theoretical results predicted using Faraday's laws of electrolysis. So, as you can see, what I'm doing throughout my introduction is that I'm building justification and reason within my introduction. It's highly structured, there's a purpose for every part of the introduction, and it's not just like random childhood stories that I'm putting in to try and get personal engagement marks. And so yeah, that brings us to the end of my tips for the introduction. Uh, biggest tip is be real in your A. The examiner's gonna know if you're spinning bullshit. The examiner's gonna know if you don't know what you're talking about. What I found is that you can't really fabricate curiosity. You can't really fabricate personal engagement. That's gotta come off naturally. It's gotta come off like authentically. So yeah, explain why you're passionate about the A. Explain why you care about the A. Explain why you chose this IA. Don't just say COVID-19 hit me and so I had to do this IA. Try and add that extra layer of spark and ingenuity and it will do you justice, I promise. So just to recap, if you're struggling to find a structure for your IA, try to do the three-point method which I've come up with. Start off with an interesting fact, story or question, move into a bit of the background theory, and then from that background theory, come around to explaining why you chose the research question that you did and state your aim. That brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, or if you want to send me your introduction, you can DM me on Instagram at Sinead Sakota. You can write a comment below and I wish you luck. So yeah, bye!